Oh no. Footy is no longer back. In fact, it is a really long time until Footy's back, but it's going to be okay. We're going to talk our way through it, gentlemen, and folks out there. I'm James Clements, not to be confused with Bo McCreary, aka the fastest man on the planet. <laughs> you say uh, Bo. That, that, was, that yeah. was pretty good. Yeah. You know, it's good from you. Yeah. Out there representing the, uh, the ginger <laughs> brethren. Uh, anyway, this is the AFL Today Show, and joining me for the Midweek Madness Show are my two best friends in the world. Over there is a man... There is a gaping hole where his heart used to be, thanks to the Sydney Swans Aww. and their absolute capitulation no-show on the weekend. It's Alex Donnelly. I've also had a bit of a midlife crisis, Jim. I'm running a marathon, and I decided it on Monday morning. It's the Ballarat Marathon in oh. April. So I'm going to your hometown. Your place. Designed by Steve Monaghetti, this course, apparently. You're running as well, right, Jim? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Riding it on a bike. That's very interesting. Good luck, yeah. uh, I'll be able to tell you like how many times you can go past the chips and gravy spot. Yeah. That'll be good. Uh had to go to 21 Arms, even though it shut down 15 years ago. I don't know. <laughs> Give you a couple of good pub ideas. There's yeah. actually some good food there. Oh, nice. Anyway, uh, and in the middle, it's the little fella, the stats boy. He's up and about. The ruse is signing players. He yes. doesn't know what to do with his hands. He's doing these ones. He's like, what do I do? <laughs> Let's go. Destination Club. Uh, yeah, I reckon we'll come down. Maybe we'll do a pub crawl while in Ballarat while Alex is doing the uh, marathon is along a, the way through there. Actually, That is content right there. It's in April, isn't it? Yeah. We might actually have an AFL sh- game up in Ballarat that weekend. On the Sunday. Somewhere like that. That would be a huge hey, weekend. Imagine if, yeah, so the marathon starts at 8 o'clock. I'll so surely at, we could have the one fifteen game at Ballarat. I'll book in the, the Airbnb. Sunday. Pub crawl is on. on the hill. I yeah. love that. We're on. I love that. You're booking an Airbnb. You're sleeping <laughs> in my parents' garage. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. I'm in the shed, that. stats boy. In the shed. That's cheaper. All right. So today's show, this is a very special show. As I mentioned on the Monday grand final wrap, uh, we do have a little bit of news. There's like trade stuff sort of popping off. This is the dumb period. Mm. The really dumb period where it's just like, this is happening. It's not happening. <laughs> it's not happening. Some stuff will be happening. There'll be some things you just don't hear about. They've got trade things all throughout the day. Exactly. You've got one hour, I reckon, every day where it's actual real news. The rest of it is just people going, Fluff. I think he should go there. You know, the rest of it's Adam Cooney. It annoys be really me so good much. if you weren't here. Uh, <laughs> we've also got a couple of year nows, but mostly we are grading every team's season this year and what they need to do now to get better. <laughs> Simple. <laughs> it's a very simple exercise. Yeah. 18 teams broken down. We're giving them grades. We're talking out what worked, what didn't, how they get better, and away we go. I reckon we'd be better list managers than a few out there. Wouldn't oh, we? Oh, yeah, hard? we could have helped Essen and uh, We'd also probably give better speeches than a couple of the presidents. Ooh, What's going yeah. on? We'll talk about that in one second. So before we get into that, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get around all the comments and everything. Jump in there. Tell us what to cover throughout the trade period. What Players, do you want to see land where? What do you want your team to get? What does your team need? Sound off. Let us know. Make sure you subscribe, like, star, all the good stuff, and get around us on the socials. Cause can you smell it? <laughs> it's trade period almost. Yeah, we're, we're going to say trade periods back or something like that. Trade periods. <laughs> Free agency. Yeah. My favorite one is like someone pointed out, like, uh, who have they got on the uh, the trade radio? It's like Corns and Well, you know, every, Sam every couple of hours it's different people. Yeah, they yeah. just sort of change. And like, they're in suits. No, yeah. that was um, that was on Monday. That was Hanabry and Tom Morris. Yeah, that's Morris. right. Dan Hanabry. Why is Hanabry in a suit? Because he was going to the St Kilda Best and Ferris. Oh. Yes. What are we doing? You're in a suit. <laughs> weird. Stop being weird. <laughs> right. Let's do some news ticker. Speaking of uh, weird presidents of clubs, mm, this one, the first one, is a weird the one. Saints having a big boohoo cry. Yeah. Boo-hoo! <laughs> oh, it's just the drafting system's broken. Yeah, you broke it. By your horrible draft picks. They've been horrible uh, since they lost the grand final. So, so I went back and had a quick look at St Kilda's like last 10 to 12 years of drafting. Mm. The main thing that stu- stu- stuck out to me, stuck, stuck out, out, stuck, stuck out. out. <laughs> That's how good St Kilda are going. They <laughs> gave away pick 13 for Tom Hickey in 2012 or 13. Wow, and then Hickey was really Hickey good. was everywhere. Yeah, yeah. They gave away pick five for Jake Carlisle. Like they had the Dougal oh, Howard what? and and Ooh. Paddy, um, uh, the Ruckman that used to play for Essendon tried. There was like a Paddy stack Riley, right? of picks yeah. involved in that. There was, there was. They've literally just given, except for that draft two years ago where they got the three kids, they've been terrible at mm, it. It's 100%. their own fault. Like, more, you, more hickeys than Stats Boy two weeks ago. Right? Ah, <laughs> whoa. Jeez. But they could have drafted Bont and Petrarca yep. and they chose not to. Yeah, so, they took Billings over one. And, and Tom McCartan. Tom McCartan. Over which Billings. at the time, Tom McCartan fair. I yeah. just find it very tough to hear the whinging from a St Kilda president who get what they get the equal third most amount of funding, uh, funding from yeah. the AFL. And he was complaining about funding. And it's yeah. like, dude, just be better. Mm. Make better decisions. Hire better people. Also, play, Victorian play teams can't team. complain. I know Alex will be on this uh, thing about being from Sydney and things like that. 
Victorian teams can't complain. They have the rubber the ground when it comes to everything in AFL. So I mean, the, the academies are the private schools. Yeah. And the TAC Cup. Exactly. Yeah, if you screw up your drafts time and time again, <clears throat> if you swing and miss in free agency yeah. time and time and time again, if you just go, ah, oh, we'll just oh, reclamation projects, yeah. this will be awesome. Paddy Dow, he's going to be great. Yeah. No, yeah. just there's a reason yeah. why he stinks, right? This is it. You do this time and time again, and you like, what's the definition of insanity? Same thing over and yeah. over again. Expecting Expect- a different result. Like, this is what the Saints do. It's but, ridiculous. But that's it. It's like, oh, you complain about Swans Academies. They had four players in the Academy in like their grand final squad. Their percentage rate of having players that play over 100 games from the academy is like 0.1%. Yeah, it's still small. Yeah, it's yeah. four from like 3,000. Yep. So big sample size. So it's like, oh, boo-hoo. Stop complaining. And yep. I feel like the St. Kilda, even their own sort of picks from their academies and stuff, they had also hit on a couple of them, and they've actually gotten more games than most teams. It's like, what are we doing yeah, here? What are the, you complaining the about? The stuff he's complaining about isn't affecting Stop them as, anywhere near as much as what he thinks. Anyway, uh, speaking more of sooking. more sooking presidents, the Richmond president. I Evan, saw this differently. Really? I think the way he was talking about it, they just wanted to talk up Nathan Broad. I nah. know. No, I don't think, I think in, in hindsight, he's like, oh, crap, I just gave a whack to all the guys on the way out, the Richmond president. But I, I don't think, know he knew what he was doing. Was I don't know speech. if he did. I think he really wanted to talk about Nathan Broad because he's been a legend of the club. I don't know. I, I I know there's some people that are on my side with that. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, because I saw online a few people were like, oh, I think I think it was just normal. I agree with them. Nah, I, I don't know what you guys think. Nah, it's a whack. It's basically going screw you for jumping off. No, this, is one, flags. this is one hundred percent like. Uh, it's like the addition by subtraction. It's like you, you're basically negating yeah. their achievements with the club by not acknowledging. Yeah, he should have acknowledged them. This is like run. when they yeah, took mate. when Adelaide took the future star award off Jack Gunston because he was leaving. Like, oh yeah, you're not getting that because you're leaving. Yeah, it sucks. Mm. Uh, I think in that sort of position for Richmond, you should be just appreciative of what you've achieved. Flags, yeah. And just go, look, hey, everyone has, like, different circumstances. If everyone's jumping off now because it's a sinking ship, sure, we'll go on. It'll be fine, but we've still got three flags. It was a great time. They're also about to have the best draft hand ever in a great draft. Yep. Yep. That'll be fine. Yep. So that was a bit uh, P-Week, if you ask me. Speaking of P-Week, Harry Perriman! (laughs) Off to Collingwood, apparently. And uh, are you just waiting for Alex Donnelly to gush about the money or not? Because I was. $900,000 $900,000 oh, was it? Oh, there it is. I, was, I, sorry, I, Alex just shouted out there. Well, I'm not going to react like that, but that seems well over. But I think it's good that they can have a bit more yeah, midfield presence other than uh, they I mean, so. sure. He's a good player. I think, he's he's I think a fine he's, he's player. Can, yeah. I mean, but that's good, a lot of money. Good on him for getting the bag. Yeah, but get like, the bag. Always get the bag. Always get the bag. I'm never, ever, <laughs> ever going to blame a player for getting the bag. Yeah. Don't care. Get but your money. I will blame Jared Pollock for the Carl- rest of my life. Carlton and Collingwood fans fighting about the dr- the contract length and how much money is pretty funny. It's like, no, we want to pay a out of favour GWS midfielder more. Yeah. <laughs> so when you put it like that, that is pretty funny. He's a good player. I still love you, Zach Williams. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's a it's a strange situation. I would, I don't want to belabor all this sort of stuff too much. Like Harry Perriman, he's fine. Collingwood, we. I better, think you'll help him. Yeah, that'd be a better team with him. That's yep. fine. Like, okay. If you want to pay him that much, fine. Whatever. Hopefully it hamstrings you later. Sucked in. GWS, interested in Jake Stringer. Saw this yesterday. Does Jake yeah. Stringer have the best management ever? Everyone's Everyone's like, oh, everyone was like, oh, yeah, no, I've heard Colin would have pretty good Sydney. He's pretty good. You know, he's pretty good. You know, he's also oh, Western Bulldogs can't I'm bringing him back. Western Bulldogs like, what? <laughs> yeah, Bulldogs <laughs> like, no. <laughs> it's like, this is, he's just like absolutely up for sale. I love yeah. it. Like prize bull. And everyone's like, like you might be a bit. But I think you're I reckon 20 bucks says he stays at Essendon. 100%. Yeah. On Probably. that, like, uh, half... A 400 half, grand? 400 grand deal. Uh, GWS, Jake Stringer, I don't see how that works in no, that forward line. No, they've got Toby all. Green. It's ridiculous. And they've, yeah, well, uh, Brent Daniel, they don't, yeah, they don't no. need Jake Stringer. Coleman, yeah. medalist, Jesse Hogan. There's like, a lot of teams that could use Jake Stringer and GWS. I don't know if it's one. GWS. No. no. Uh, dogs are interested in Xavier O'Halloran. That Thanks. seems like the most Bevo thing ever. I think he's a solid player. He just mm-hmm. he, There's so many good players at GWS he doesn't get a game. When he plays, he's actually pretty good. He played a lot goal. of games. The GWS yeah. team this year had too much Xavier O'Halloran. Yeah. I, think he's, I think he's a solid player. James Peatling, most in-demand player, apparently. Lots of people going after him. Everyone yeah. wants him. Everyone's throwing him money and years. He's gone from like, oh, he's two years to it's like, you're probably going to get four. This Everyone's is, getting way too he's many just, years. He's just, he's just like doing these ones going, cool, yeah. I'm going to wait. This is one of the great things about the AFL trade period. And you're going to hear it more and more and more and more over the next two weeks. It's like, just dudes. And it's like, oh, he's like this. He's going to make his better. It's like, he's fine. James Sterling. like good. He was good. It's like, that's good. He's not super superstar. Right? Yeah. That's cool. So just 
Can you pump the jets? A he's like a 15 pump to 20. Pump the jets. Yeah. I don't hit the jets. Pump the yeah. brakes. But he's like, we're flying. The, we're flying. Is that the moon? There we go. <laughs> Screw Gary Lyon. Get me on. 360. Simple as that. I am. Can I? Is Gary Lyon? I am aggrieved. <laughs> oh, no. Jared, I am aggrieved. I am aggrieved. <laughs> hey, so actually. You fit the Robo mold. We're yeah. going off news ticket for a second. Yeah. What is the price? <laughs> so it came out. So Daniel Harford had uh, is still Ro- news ticket? Robert Robo on. Yeah. And Robo had been told. On RSN Brecky. On RSN Brecky. So they were like, yeah, you weren't on the last show. And you, it's, a, it's come out since that you're not going to come back. Is he? Yeah, I wasn't asked to come back for next year and uh so didn't you want to do a farewell show and he's like yeah i don't know i didn't really trust myself like very emotional oh, sort of stuff and i'm like as soon as i heard yeah. robo say that i'm like that is such a kick in the pants the song has been for there for 14 years to yeah. not get that one show and he's like his point like i appreciated robo for making this point and going uh the grand final rap is like a very big moment for the show that's how it goes and i didn't want to like sort of submarine it undercut it by just what? sort of having a little thing about me True. But I think he deserved today. it. Like, what yeah. are we doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also he declined to go on it because he was afraid he was going to say something. That also me was like, ah, oh, you've been a little bit childish. It's like- A little bit. But you can be professional. But at the same time, that's exactly what you'd almost expect though. After 14 years to be like he told should, yeah. that you're not in the plans for yeah. the next year. I, I agree. I think you deserve a farewell show. Yeah. And I understand like, it was just so- they did a bad having small set. It, it, it felt very weird and that there was no Jack, best of Robbo. Having Jack Rewalt sitting there just with his, you know, face- <laughs> just his face. face, and then it comes out today. Gary Lyon is like, "Oh yeah, we're in negotiation." I'm like, "Gary Lyon, yeah, we don't want Gary Lyon." Gary Lyon <laughs> in Robbo's hallowed chair. You know what makes a show like that work? The straight guy, the weird guy. <laughs> you know what Gary Lyon is not? The weird Unless guy. Unless someone no, else's wife is, is involved. Yeah, exactly. Weird. He like, is pretty weird. <laughs> he is just the world's most boring beige. Here's my giant flag for the Melbourne Footy Club because I can only ever talk about a team if they're a footy club. And you're like, be on bloody radio more with your footy clubs. He stinks. <laughs> what are we doing? Like, I want Jason no, sorry, Dunstall. Sorry, he doesn't stink. He's perfect for on the couch. Yeah, yeah, he's good on he's the couch. He's perfect on SEN. Great. <laughs> what's it? You what's can't it? have him on. Give three me seasons. Jason Dunstall just going on and whacking teams all the I feel time. Like Dunstall's want- perfect. Yeah, because you just Dun- need someone who doesn't care. Because you need someone. Who- <laughs> I don't care. Get me on. Let's do it. <laughs> but like that last chief about. Oh yeah. So how are you know so and so going? I was like, yeah, that was pathetic by them on the weekend. Here's where they aren't wrong. This is what they're doing. Exactly. He's not tough. He sucks. Gary yeah. Lyon suck. does not have the stones to do that day yeah. in day out on yeah, 360. Fair. Whereas like, chief his, will whack them. His absolute just mediocre milk toast rubbish and on the couch. <laughs> where bit that's his role on on the couch. He sets up the likes he's of like the host, John O'Brien, yeah, yeah, Buckley, yeah. and stuff. If you put him in the Robo yeah, chair, not- it just ugh, something stinks to high heaven there. I don't know. He also just looks horrible. Like it looks like if you rolled, if you aged Vince Vaughn about sixty years, <laughs> like, and then rolled him around on the floor, made him really tired, that and could, rolled him around the floor like a hairdresser it. with some clag on him as well. It's just like weird stuff sticking wherever you want. Anyway, news. Uh, <laughs> speaking of which, Clary met up with Geelong. That was a weird one. Yeah, is that's just a, back is, to, is, back is to the a, start of the year. Oh, is sorry, he a six cotton on ago. ambassador or not? Probably. He will be soon, maybe. So this also came out today. Sammy Edmonds was reporting that there's other more, well, there's more things behind the scenes that have gone on the last couple of weeks that the Melbourne uh, hierarchy are not happy with. <laughs> oh, so they're, they uh, all hate each, just a mess. They so all hate each other there, Gary obviously. Bird has, like, gone and kicked the tyres on, hey, uh, that's boy, want to trade for Clayton Oliver? And everyone's like, no. no. <laughs> who, who would want Clayton what? Oliver? But it's also, like, Gary Perth's not the list manager or the coach, so it's like, this is really Yeah, it feels weird. like they're not on... So many people in Melbourne are just not on the same page. So that is cooked. Yeah, Can we just get cooked. to the point where Petrarca leaves? Yeah. It, well, it's going to be, I think it will be one more year because they've already talked about it and then he's gone. Like we, we talked about that the other show. I mean, we've talked, we talked about this as it was happening. It's like, yeah. this, or it's not going to happen in this offseason. It's going to happen next year. Simple as that. And yep. like the Clary Oliver thing is just horrible. So 20 bucks on the D's, bottom four. It's a good call. Uh, Tim Kelly is also like, yeah, pfft. Don't like it here. What do you reckon? <laughs> Can I go somewhere else? Did and everyone's he, like, I didn't even see that. What? <laughs> Are you sure, Tim Kelly? Like, like, Maybe. Yeah. Like, I'm not having fun. And then his manager would be like, Nah, he's gonna stay. But like, he wants to be in WA. So what is he? The only op- go to go yeah, to And then he, no, but his thing is, oh, he's open to a move. It's like, yeah, I guess you would be, wouldn't you, if you're Tim Kelly? Because this stinks. But at the same mm, yeah. time, you get a lot of the footy. Uh, it is also funny because like other the reporting on this has been Tim Kelly. Oh, he's interested in the clubs like. For how much? Nah. Yeah, what? his contract's up at the end of next and year. Next year, so that'll be an interesting. He also gets injured. All the and time. then obviously, 
The big move that's already happened, Luke Parker going to North. No, it hasn't well, happened. It's requested. Yeah, it's, it's requested happening. to North. Clarko met up with him. 293 games at the Swans? Yep. That's a lot. Yeah. Obviously, he's old, but I think uh, that's okay. That's uh, rough. He's younger than wow. me. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, you guys he's are old. He's just, <laughs> he just much. Yeah. All for footy. All for Sir, footy. I'd like to report some elder abuse. <laughs> yeah. This guy. <laughs> do, they, do they used to have those ads over here as well? Like, have you seen something that could be... Th- like thought of as elder abuse. No. I've seen my that in America, granddaughter yeah. said that she was going to have my money looked after for me, and then I had no money. Have you seen elder abuse? Oh, so are we saying Luke, Mark, Luke Parker's money's getting stolen? No, I'm thinking no. Oh, he's stealing. Gonna, all, gonna try to he's steal my money. He's on for a footy player. That's all I was saying. I think that's a really good trade for North. As a North fan, I'm very happy with that. Uh, obviously not, I said the other show, not with Jack Darling, but... Going after Parker, I think uh, you were saying, oh, he's going to take people out of the midfield. He will play not no, much midfield. No, no, no. Play I said he's forward. going to play in the midfield. I think maybe very, very rarely, but he'll be a mainly forward and he's going to kick a few goals for us, which would be handy. As a Swans fan, I look at it two ways. One, you look at the player that wears a different jersey. It feels weird, yeah. Luke Parker was someone I never expected to see in anything other than Sydney Swans. Yeah, it's, it's Luke Hodge in like Brisbane Lions. It's Sam Mitchell in West Coast. Yeah, yeah. It's Shaq yeah. It's in Boston. It's, Shaq in one of his it's seven It's Hakeem Olajuwon on the Raptors. Yeah, it just it feels weird, but then at the same time, I like, struggle to get back in the team at the start of the year that yeah. obviously had the suspension. He's also only got one year left at the Swans. North are offering him two, possibly three. If we you've won, a, you've won, a, three, you've won yeah. a flag, all the best and fairest. You've been a servant. He's all good, yeah. Go get the bag. Exactly. But yeah. it, get your God, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Well, you don't get you don't go for Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> I, we, this would be like this. if Patrick Cripps left in two years. Uh, that's what Luke Parker what, a two time Brownlow. Yeah, I feel like that's yeah, what. I, but I know what you're saying. Time. I know what you're saying. I don't. He's it's more flags, like so. I don't know if Chera left again. No, there we <laughs> maybe <go>. Sam Walsh because <laughs> he'll never Sam win Brownlow. Yeah, I think that's a <laughs> maybe Sam Walsh, but at the same time, he was the number one pick. Uh, <laughs> Fagan, I love this, this story. <laughs> He's just like hanging out and like someone's mum got a photo with yeah, him. Yeah, there was four, he, I saw. He, he took the Premiership Cup down to the cafe just to show his mates. So is Chris yeah. Fagan the dude that at 7 a.m. like when you're either going to work, work or you're walking the dog yeah. and you see the like the five 65-year-old dudes having a, cu- a coffee? Yeah. Chris Fagan just went around, hey boys, look what I got. It's pretty sick, right? Yeah, apparently he was just carrying it around the uh, dog park. So there was actually in, there was actually four town. old dudes yeah. in the cafe that yeah. I went into this morning that were doing this and I walked yeah. in, they all looked up and I'm like, I'm Chris Fagan. <laughs> <laughs> this is great because they were they were talking about the game as well and oh, I, I wanted to jump in but that was fine I'm like just listen to AFL Today Show yeah. or Smasher um, <laughs> but they they were having a great time but it was exactly that and then he's like walking around with it in a towel yeah yeah he's just walking around with I it. like how he's the one that took it home he's like no no I'm, I'm the coach I'm the, I'm the captain I want to know now. though like is it like the Stanley Cup where all the players get it for like a week I reckon they do is that what they do in Stanley Cup I didn't Stanley know Cup all the players yeah. get also it for a week also the Stanley Cup is very hard to carry around well the Stanley Cup comes with its own dude Really? There's a dude that there follows is. it around. There and he is. has like the gloves and everything, and he makes sure that that's his job. I while that. you're drinking booze out of it and like making booze <laughs> is and it? stuff, and like throwing strippers and stuff in there, or whatever. <laughs> he's like, all right, boys, that's enough. Already on college. There's already a dent in the cup. Have oh, yeah. you seen that? Yeah, oh, really? I want to know who dropped it and why uh, is it Joe? It was definitely Big O. With his big, big O, yeah, you'll drop it because he's so wanky. <laughs> <laughs> he's like wanging into Joe's <laughs> noggin. Oh, sorry, no. <laughs> anyway, all right, that's all the news apart from like I don't know. I wanted to sort of kick the tires and just say, we'll get to yeah, nahs after we go through all the teams. Uh, there is so much just weird guff, as I mentioned, right? The Sam DeConing stuff like that. Ooh. Oh, he's gettable. He's gettable. Everybody's gettable. I know. I don't like that. Yeah. I hate the, the word. The old Ted DiBiase, Ted everybody's got a price. I hate the word gettable. Because uh, it's more about like, yeah, do you think Geelong's going to drive an easy bargain to give up a Sam it's Geelong. No, no, chance. No, no, chance. no, definitely not. Unless they're basically they're the worst fantasy manager who like always <laughs> rescinds trades, but then sends you the worst one. You're like, mm. oh, thanks a lot, Geelong. Yeah. Yep. Um, with all that in mind, free agency starts this Friday, October four. Yep. Around nine a.m. Uh, finishes October eleven. So you get a week of free agency, and the trade period begins Monday, October seven. So next Monday, around nine a.m. as well. As we've sort of hit on in this show, there's not a giant amount of movement in the middle of trade period. You have a lot of stuff and right spinning at the end, wheels. Yeah. You'll have a lot of stuff popping off at the start like where it's first, just like, this is happening, this is happening. And then we literally spend two weeks spinning wheels. Yeah. So to the point where we have October 7th through to Wednesday, October 16th, uh, we will be doing a live show. Yes. On that final Wednesday of free cool. of the trade period, which is going to be fun. Are we uh, doing it at Docklands as well? Yeah, we'll be in suits. It'd be weird. <laughs> We're not going to be in suits. <laughs> no, We're not going to be in Docklands. Ah. Uh, Statsboy could fight Tom Morris. That'd be fun. Um, Who'd win a fight? 
Me. I like stats boys, monkey strength. I like I like stats what? guy because also Tom Morris's private school stats guys from the mean streets of wherever Isn't he's it? from. Yeah. yeah, definitely not mean streets. Yeah. It's pretty much a private that, school. That's the joke. Stats <laughs> those, guy. Those guns have got him covered from chimpanzee yeah. to chimpanzee. Uh, but that's I'm it. Not, we'll be I'm doing a live show for a couple of hours across that last few hours of trade period on Wednesday, October sixteenth. <laughs> Sounds good. Right. We are much better than trade radio. Please watch. We're not going to be breaking that money that many news, but we'll be basically covering it. Talking about what it means more so than they would be, probably. Yes. We contextualize things on the AFL Today Show, and that's what we're about to do with the 2024 AFL team rankings, ratings, reviewings, (laughs) and how they get better in 2025. So we're basically taking a look at all 18 teams, giving them a pass, fail, whatever, mark for the season, compare what they did last year, and then basically go plug the holes. This like, show's going to go forever. Yeah. We probably should have it. We'll, we, we'll set up the timer. Not. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll go as Is quickly as possible. Do we have a siren the back there, Leo? Two Gerald, minutes, Leo's going to give us two minutes per team. Okay. And oh, wait. when it's two minutes up, he's going to just throw. <laughs> Maybe go th- go to three because some teams no, need a little bit three more Three times eight. Oh, no. That's fine. We're already an hour into this yeah, show. What's another hour? <laughs> we, we had a five minute diatribe about 360. I think it it's good. Be two, five man. minutes. You give me another 45 minutes, I'll take into 360 <laughs> yeah. if you want. Oh, no. Uh, two to three minutes each team. Let's do it. I'm going to footy class. Uh, <laughs> Stats Boy is going to get have something thrown in his head every three minutes. All right. Sweet. Not happening. Let's start with a crumb. Oh, the crumb. The Adelaide no. Crows, one of the worst underperforming <laughs> teams of the season, having finished last year 11 and 12 and in 10th. They were primed to go top four if you listen to the stats before ah, the start of the season. At least top eight. I've cooked that one, yeah. Unfortunately, they finished eight and 14, which is substantially worse than 11 and 12. I'm going to give the Adelaide Crom season an F. Alex. F. Yeah, stats easy boy. easy F. They were the most disappointing team, I think. Uh, with their list, they should have at least pushed for finals again. I think one of the most annoying aspects of the Carlton season was losing that stupid game to Adelaide at yes. Marvel. And if for Essendon fans out there, they're doing the Leo meme as well. Going, <laughs> hey, 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 that happened to us as well. We blew a stupid game to them and it probably cost us finals. <laughs> what went right? They cost Essendon finals. They did. <laughs> yeah, they so did well with that. Yeah. What went right is that at they least- They smashed the dogs too. They have these random games where they look amazing. Yep. And you can see the bare bone structure of it, but defensively they were shocking at times. Offensively, they just fall off a cliff if they weren't at home sometimes as well, unless they were at Marvel randomly. And you're like, what is happening with this team? It made so little sense throughout the season. Their average points for landed them 12th. Their average points against landed them 10th. Mm. And you're like, what are you? And Matty Nix has got zero like He's idea, it feels like. Lucky so, to be hanging on, I reckon. How's the fan base feeling after that season? <laughs> Desolute, I would assume. Yeah. Cause you, you, they have close spurts. to burning effigies. Obviously, you got uh, Rankin staying on the park and not getting suspended every three or weeks tearing or, his hammy. or injured would have helped him a lot because you need that sort of live wire, a bit of a yep. spark. He missed, what, 10 games? Yeah, he missed a lot of games. And then you got uh, Thrill, Thrill Thorpe. When he came back, their forward line, even when Tex was there, just was looked, awesome. a, looked a little bit better, a bit more agile. So that was unlucky. But the fact that they're like midfield, like Dawson dropped off this year. They need another midfield. Keys was really good, but only every like three or four Saliga games. On, Saliga, Saliga and Scholler really getting good. better as well. Yeah. Like, it's like, cool, but how Curtin. good are you, right? They Curtin is there too. They didn't have enough guys that were like in that A grade sort of uh, player. Yeah, if you went through and ranked their list, you'd sort of look There's at- There's one A grader in that team. You look at ranking. Yeah. Whereas last year you would have said like three or four. because No, text, no, just in general, really there is one Dawson. legitimate Dawson A grader. Really There's good. one A grader yeah, that's ranking. Yeah, yeah. Whereas- uh, I think Thriller can get there. Yep. I'm but not as down on the <coughs> Crom hitting the next year because you look at Fog, Thriller, and Rankin. Still, still good, and like, yeah. That is a fine like sort of starting point. Yeah. But how much oomph do they have through the midfield? Mm. That's the biggest thing. So the fan base is going to be a bit sort of bummed out, I reckon. Yeah. But how do they fix it? How do they fix this for 2025? Well, they've been very, very, very aggressive in the trade front. Uh, Alex Neil Bullen are obviously already – essentially like Wants locked to go away there. for the trade there. Same as coming. And Isaac well, coming, right? That's going to be what, a second round a second round pick for but Neil But again, Bourne. Neil Bourne's not, he led to the depth, but he's just that nah, classic Adelaide Neil Bourne's, Neil Bourne's I know you guys like him, but he's not going to take him to the next level. I think coming can. I think coming is an absolute beast. I think these are really good pickups if they get it. So yep. there we go. There's I'll the siren. <clears throat> I think the ceiling is the roof next year. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Brisbane. They were 17 and six last year. Runners up. This year they won the bloody thing. Yes. They won the entire bloody thing. They won the flag. <laughs> 14 and 8 come from fifth and away. There you go. Not so bad. you're missing a game there because that's 22 games. Yes, 23. that's what we're doing. 15 and 8. There you go. Maybe. 
Something like anyway, that. Anyway, it's an A plus. They won the flag. Yeah, they get an A plus from me. What happened there? That's yeah, boy. definitely an A plus. If you win the flag, doesn't matter where you come from. A+. So, when we're talking about the ratings and <laughs> rankings for these and the like, the marks like oh, they won the flag. They get an A plus. The way they did it, it's like an A double plus for making like they almost it's a up, plus plus plus. They basically like leaned in <laughs> with the controller because they put the setting like in round seven onto hard. Oh yeah, yeah. and they're like, all right, let's just make it really hard on ourselves. <laughs> this will be sick. Now we're going to pro. And off they went. And they were awesome. They were yeah. amazing. They had so many injuries. Like, a lot of people were saying they're gone. We, well, like, I kept saying, like, during the finals, they've lost three <clears throat> games since May. Yeah. Like, it's insane. They won they on the road, which was the big thing. That, that like, was Callum Dick's big point. They had their best record yeah. on the road ever. Yeah, ever, yeah. So, they, that so was just awesome. a big awesome. positive to actually be able to win yeah. on the road under Fagan. They won uh, at the MCG twice, twice in two weeks. Yep. Awesome gear. <clears throat> so, the fan base is just still flying. That's awesome. The fan bases are still drunk. Yeah. yeah I love good. it. Did you see how Logan Morris was uh, having a yeah. uh, beer in the uh, in the ice bath where Kane nice. Corns goes to the gym? That's I, uh, I also saw more Lions paraphernalia on the streets of Melbourne over the last, like, what, Sunday, Monday, yeah. Tuesday. Still out there. Yeah. Yeah. Being flown really hard. More I saw than someone I on the train this morning. It's like, Wednesday. Still in a oh, Brisbane car. Well, if I went for Bri- if my team won the flag, I'd be still wearing stuff. Yeah, of course. You'd be still hammered. Yeah. yeah. You'd, Absolutely. You would be Millhouse under the seats. Okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Mr. CMCN. Uh, trades picks plans to improve for 2025. Well, they're getting the, the number one pick. The rich this get annoys richer. Me. Yeah, yeah. So Levi Ashcroft, who could be a number one pick in the draft, comes in as a father son. Yeah. Not bad. He's a freak. And they bring back a raft of players from injury. Yeah, you got because- Kitty Coleman, Link McCarthy, who two of their like best players. And then Darcy Gardner and Tom Duday. Tom Duday, everyone talked up as like a great recruit for him. Couldn't even get on the park. Because he did his knee. Because he did his knee Thursday before he But all no, four no, of those he guys. Did it like round 10 before. It was like, yep, he's playing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then the next and day he did, he did his knee. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But even like Darcy Gardner, people go, oh, but those people go, oh, he's not that good. He's a really good player. He would fit in their team. Uh, how do you fit them all in now? Could they have too many dudes? They might lose Joe. No, but though. too many dudes for Brisbane, I think. Too yeah. many du- good they've thing. actually got good dudes. Yeah. yeah. It's a big difference when you're dudes. Essendon has too many Essendon average has too dudes. many mediocre yeah. dudes. Yeah. Uh, they have really good dudes. But it's like, where, it's does, where, does, where does Zorko fit in? Because Kitty Coleman's straight into that halfback spot I think now. You've got oh, you to keep Zorko in the, the halfback. Yeah, like, I know. Like, is that too many? T- good problems to have. Good problems to have. Chris is stoked. He's like, oh, geez, what are we going to do? There's too yeah, many good right. players. <laughs> yeah. But they'll, love it. they'll be looking just like as strong next year, especially if they get all those players. A plus, 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 plus. Yeah. yeah. Carlton! Uh, 13 and 9 last year, lost in the prelim. 13 and 10 this year, lost in an elim. Uh, I'm going to give them, it's the par- bare pass mark. C, C plus. Uh, <clears throat> they made finals. Yep. But they also mm, had the, just. they also had the injury year from hell. Uh, talked about Brisbane losing a bunch of players to ACLs. Carlton just lost at one point, we could basically field an 18-player 18 team, 18 player team of our injury Every players. soft tissue, lower leg injury possible. Yeah, exactly. they need to fix that up. Did they, didn't they get rid of their... They did, yeah. They, so Russell, that's a change for 2025. Andrew just, Russell's out, so the changes are sort of... Be healthy. Be yeah. The old Swans guy. Yep. And so the big thing is like moving on from players like Jack Martin, who you're like, lower it's great injury. to have you, but you keep getting injured. It seems like a risky move to get rid of him, but... David it's Cunningham a, as it's well. It's a good thing because they've March getting, gotten injured. Marchbank March goes Bank. as well. So basically, you're just going, all right, we're clearing the decks with the Camp yep. Reale twins. We get Jack Silvani back. You have oh, yeah. hopefully a healthy TDK. It just gives them a lot more options for next year. But this Jack year... Jack Silvani's not doing anything. This year, you have like... <clears throat> I'll get to him in a second. <laughs> he's, he's crap. They still get the C, the C+. You throw that around too, like... Liberally, oh, just I'm saying not sitting crap. in the middle here. This Jack Savani is a very, 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 very average player. Can't kick. I'll, talk, gets, I'll talk about I'm it. Not, I'm give me, not give me a second. So give me your <laughs> upgrades for the Carlton right. season. I'm a C minus. Uh, was very close to giving them D, but it's like uh, they did have that injury year from hell. The start of the year, I'm like, they have to make a prelim again. But then when I look back on the year, I'm like, all the injuries that happened, you know. Everything turned after the first quarter against GWS and uh, – the TDK injury was yeah the, that didn't help because he was so. on the rise yeah, yeah I'll, I'll give him a C because of that as well I think I think if he stayed healthy they could have pushed up a little bit more he, he's an absolute star the fan base is not happy though and then yeah the fan base how is you fell not off happy. the face of the earth yeah yeah but I think we can put so much of that down to injuries and I think <laughs> game plan if, though, but in the middle bit. of the year everyone's like flaggers we're gonna do it again after and the Geelong then, game yeah. after the Geelong game after yeah that's the, right there was another game after that where they've smashed Richmond and you're like all right cool this is on but losing TDK. And then it all just avalanched into like losing everybody. Yeah. Uh, bringing Doc back. Just the decision making at the end of the year sucked as well. Uh, the fan base is just angry, but hopefully, if they pick up someone like Dan Houston, yeah. it gives them an extra ball handler coming out the back. 
I don't think Carlton's wishes are I don't reckon being, you're going to get the deal I don't going. think we'll get Dan Houston. I no, think, he, it doesn't look like that, but you never know. There's no way you get North that deal. Always crumble in these deals. Also, just need to pump the brakes and go, we're going to get dudes back. We get the Camperiello twins. You're going to get Nick Haynes. A little bit of Nick Haynes reloading. Right, yeah. They pick up Nick Haynes. It's just another He's solid back. Yeah, yeah. um, as long as Carlton stay healthy next year, it changes their outlook. Ways Simple to that. improve. But, uh, have better forward entries. Don't have 17 dudes on an injury list. And guys that can run two ways. No, yeah. Even Snicks going out and go, hey, boys, what we need this next year is speed. You're like, yeah. They and really speed, yeah. need some speed. So Matt Kennedy, Matt Owies moving on. Possibly. I think Owies, I didn't write that down actually. Owies, I think, is a big out. He, third most goals. I know that people say he's average, but yep. I think he's a big out. Uh, they'll be, I think, better next year. Okay. They, 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 they just won't win a flag with this list, though. That's just Ooh. not happening. All right, Collingwood, they won the flag last year, 18 and 5. This year, they went 12, 9 and 2. That's, who, that's what I forgot about. Brisbane was the draw. That's ah. why there was a game missing in And there. they missed the finals. Oh, nice. You'd yeah. hate to see that, yep. wouldn't you? Yep. But they get a D from me because they were also cruel by injuries, not to maybe the extent of Carlton or... Possibly even Brisbane. They did have a lot, yeah. They had a lot, though. And they had them at really annoying times, I think, for the Pies. Like, it was sort of this weird, consistent, oh, we've lost this dude for four weeks. This mm. guy goes out for another six weeks. We've lost this guy for a year. They lose Nathan Murphy. I give them a D just because it felt like the flag defense just never sort of got on track. Really? Yeah. And, like, there was a moment, though, when they were in the hunt and then it all just sort of fell apart as their injury toll sort of hit. So I'll probably give them a D-plus to the season. But they just at times look slow. Looked a bit ungainly. The forward line, bringing in Schultz, that didn't help nah. at all, really. Uh, you look at Kane Corns as like the one eating all the crow of like, oh, Ka- Schultz, is, he's a gun. It's going to be awesome. He's completely ch- it didn't help. He'd come off a great year at Freo. Was though, I still so. think I was he, on board he could still him. be good for the Pies, but yeah, he wasn't amazing. Yep. Alex. F. F. Oh, F. Yeah. Defending premiers had everyone fit and healthy in the first three rounds, went zero and three. Ooh. Went zero and three to start the season. Then yeah. they get everything back on track. They lose to Gold Coast, Essendon, Geelong, and Hawthorne in a in four That's weeks in a row. Not good, yeah. And got like losing to Gold Coast. Like, come on. Got, and Essendon, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Essendon loss was just particularly That's egregious. Hilarious. Like they got run over by Essendon mm, that they night. They beat the Blues twice, though. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. They, but they they missed finals, and it's like, oh yeah, we had injuries this and that. At the start of the year, you didn't have injuries, and yeah, that's probably that's cost, them, yeah. cost your season. That's exactly right. Good that's call. Boy. I agree with Alex, but I'm just going an E, just to, just above an S. If uh, I think there's worse teams, so I don't want to put him in the uh, in the F category there. No, but defending premiers, I, their defense was the biggest worry this year. Whereas last year, you go oh, that you can hold your hat every game on their defense. Like Darcy Moore, just a lot of their more experienced players dropping off the face of the earth this year, and I, yeah, not good. Every time they gave up hundred points, they lost. Mm. Yeah. That's why they got the D. It was just like there wasn't ever quite the sort of momentum yeah. that you need, especially as running premiers. We go, we've got that belief. They'd have these moments where you're like, oh, they're back, and then they just would have like a weird crummy loss. They yeah. scored 100 or more four times. One was against North in that ridiculous comeback. Yeah. West Coast, Port Adelaide, and then Melbourne in the last round. Relying on no one uh, cared about. Nick Dacos too much as well. Like that when they beat Brisbane, I was there. The only reason they won that was because Nick Dacos was just doing things off his own. Boot. Areas to improve. Yeah. Get more good players. Yeah. Twelfth ranked defense. It was just not good enough. Yeah. That, and I don't I don't mean say like they've got good players, but I mean have players play along yeah. Nick Dacos at his level. Get to go he fit. Tom Mitchell obviously coming back from injury. Yep. Uh Meyer check back on the pitch. Dan McStay having some consistency. So there's plenty to work with. Possibly for get a new I like the, word, uh, the idea of Dan McStay and consistency in the same sentence. Sure. Yeah. Let's see what happens there. A few things behind the scenes, like staff member wise, they need to fix up as well. But that's yeah, another, well, that's That's it. another story. Oh, yeah. That, 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 I don't know well, about Well, they let about. Graham Wright go on a th- six month holiday and he's like, oh, I'm not coming back. Yeah. Perryman helps. Yeah. Uh, get healthy. They'll be fine. Yeah. It I still think like they can push for the loaded. Still. They've loaded for Bear for one more crack. Final but they're about to like, lose like the greatest last player last of all answer. time, <laughs> John Noble. Oh, I thought you were going to say Pete. He's lost to overcome. The weapon. The weapon. Yeah. Tough one. Essendon! Oh, oh, look away, Essendon fans. 11 and 12 last year. 11, 11, 1. So year. pretty much at 11th. In both 11th years. in both years. That is the most Essendon thing I've ever seen. Thank you, Essendon. <laughs> just, you bring me so much joy. Uh, I'm going to rate their season a D. It was just, if you want to talk about pass marks like Carlton, still made the finals, right? Essendon, they get a D because they were up and about absolutely flying. They thought they were going to make finals. And then they just were not good. <laughs> At all. Nope. So they get a D because there's so many holes in that team. They just had blinkers on and felt like most of the time going into the year, it's like, no, 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 we're fine, we're fine, we're fine, we're fine. It's like the dog in the house on fire. It's like, yeah. everything's fine. It's like, no, it's not, Essendon. What are you doing? They get a D from me, Alex. They get a C. Is before, that a pass? 
Yeah. Ooh. Uh, bang on 50%. Because before the season, I was like, their list sucks. Zach right. Merritt's their best player and they won't make finals. Fair enough. They did exactly what I expected them to do. It's like they've got a weak draw. They'll win some games. And it gets to July, and they will fall away spectacularly. It was exactly the same. They lost in nine of their last 12. Ooh. 13th in offense, 15th in defense. Yeah. That like, is they're, shocking. They're not man. that good, which is why, like, you know, when they were playing well and everyone's up and about, fair enough. But it, as we all expected, they weren't good. Yep. And it came back to bite them so at the end of the year. you're giving them a pass. Because I didn't expect them to be <laughs> good. good. I don't know how you think marks work. <laughs> but so I didn't. I didn't expect Essendon to be good. Well, then they and then be they weren't, weren't they good. They were still crummy. Like they, you don't. Your they lived up to my expectations of being bad. They lived up to your expectations of bad. Therefore, they get they, a pass. Yeah, they get a pass. Yeah, I know. I don't understand that one. It's, it's a very specific. It's say. very specific Alex Donnelly type of logic where it makes no <laughs> sense. It's great. That's all right. It's, for, it's his uh, rating. My, yeah, I'm giving him a D as well. Definitely not a pass. Definitely, uh, they could have been worse. Obviously, 11th, they're still close to the finals, but dropped off massively. I think Essendon, every year, the fans, the the uh, coaches, the, the people picking the list, need to look at their list and go, we're actually not that good. They ha they think they have a lot of players that are really, really good, and then they uh, yeah, don't perform. Well, so. no Dodoro and Sheedy is, is the biggest well, I think place where they can improve. It didn't help that Ben McKay, like was really, really bad when they paid him a lot of money. Back half of the season, he was terrible. Yeah. So. The likes of Coldwell, though, like, how do you get better in 2025? You've got actually half decent young dudes, I think, yeah. in there, in, in the system with Perkins. The soon to be greatest player in the AFL. Caddy, Caddy would be really good. Martin, Caddy, yeah. Coldwell. Like, there are good dudes on this team. And just, like, this might be just the year before, the year before, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but so next year might be the year before. They've been saying that for what, 20 years? But it feels so. like that's been their entire existence yeah. since the 2000, just ram, like, you know, running roughshod over everybody. So I feel like. <clears throat> the Jake Stringer move is sort of hanging over their heads. What else can they do to get better next year? Because I think there's a lot of internal improvement. That get they need games into Hobbs dudes. and Sardis. Yeah. Yeah. Young guys that, that can kick goals they need as well. Mm -hmm. So that'd be handy. They're going after Finn McGuinness, like another one, like Shaw. That's, that's just a, what it's not going to make him improve that, that much. Maybe field. just because he's a bit stronger and they have got a lot of small guys that don't really tackle that much. I don't know. But that that's the only one that's on their radar, which is a bit of a worry for Essendon because they need some players probably to improve. But Just draft better. Yeah, probably should just draft better. Correct. I just want to see, instead of talking about the Essendon edge, I just want to see them have an <laughs> actual identity. Yeah. Like just any sort of identity. It's like, what are you? you were, they were nothing this year. That's why they get a D. Yep. They stunk. Fremantle! There's a team that also underperformed. Last year, 14, 10, and 13, they were in the top two at one point this year. Yeah. Finished 10th, 12, 10, and 1. They get a D from me because that was just a D for disappointing year because <laughs> they also dealt with injuries as well. Obviously, you see Sean Darcy. What do we expect, though? It's Sean Darcy. And then you have Tracy missing out of time. Uh, Their fall line was cooked, Pierce. yeah. Like, you've just got, like, bits of your spine. It's having after getting out of play and the injury. But it just never really <clears throat> felt like it clicked mm. for Frio. And it's just – you it just felt wildly whelming. <laughs> Whelming, yeah. I was perfectly whelmed. And they get a yeah. D because I expected better when they played their best football, i.e. basically any time they played Melbourne. You're like, that team <laughs> yeah. is awesome. Yeah. They but just couldn't do it against anybody Melbourne, else. I think. Like, they lost to West Coast in a derby. Like, what, they, a got derby? And they got smashed. They got smashed, derby. yeah. It's brutal. That's you can't costing. do that. And, like, expect to get a better than a D from me at the end of the year. <laughs> Alex. See, because I thought they were going to slide big time. Oh, my God, with these <laughs> stupid men. No, I, I had them in my bottom four at the start to of the season. Fair, it's no, probably the worst teacher in the, the world. Oh, the other one I didn't like with the C, but hey, this Jim, one I don't you're mind. an idiot. Ah, so I didn't expect better. You get an A. So. I, expect, <laughs> I expected We appreciate you for trying. You're basically giving out like participation awards because I'm like, not. You and you took part in the Alex Donnelly AFL season. You get a C because you lived up to it. Oh, I thought you were going to be bad, so you get a pass for being bad. Say they're bad. Yeah. They were bad. It's they're not. Me. They were better than better than what I thought they were going to be. I had them winning seven good, games yeah. at the start of the season. I'm and if it was if it well. wasn't for Josh Tracy and uh Sam Darcy going down in the last month, they would have they made would, finals. Yeah. There's Giant excuses Miss, there. Giant Miss had a stinky year. They still get a D. I expected better. Stats point. I'll I'll give I'm giving you the D because I think with that list, uh Definitely where they were on the second, uh, on the ladder and things like that. The massive drop off was just really disappointing. But no I know what Alex is saying on this one. I didn't like the other one with the C, but this one, a lot of people, I don't think any of us had them in the top eight anyway. So 10th is probably like a pass mark for them. Maybe not in their minds because they were up there, but in terms of their lists, I think next year they'll be pushing right up there. But a D just because they dropped off. Yeah, so much. The fan base is just going to be 
Actually, we didn't the fan see... base is pumped for them at the moment because they've got this great draft yep. hand. They look like they're going to get Shea Bolton, exactly. and then in the back of their minds, they're like, they "Oh, Chad yeah. Warner, Chad Warner." I reckon they could push for at least top six. We didn't really hit on the Essendon fan base as well. Like they're frustrated. I think yeah. you look at then Frio. You go, we can see something. They're frustrated yeah. by the results, but they have the building blocks to be really, yeah. really, really good. Yep. Like with Sarong and Brayshaw and everybody, Hayden Young, you're like. This is a good list. This like, is a good if team. I was, if I'm grading Freo from halfway through the season, I'm probably giving them an F. But from the start of the season... And you add like a small yeah. four like Shea Bolton, maybe they snag Jack Martin and place Geelong get him or something like that. But it's just kind of handy. Like, this need to stop... I wrote down... Stop fading away in the last quarter. Eliza Riley talked about it on Code Sports. We've talked about it heaps of times. They would have easily made the finals if they just finished game strong. Yep. Tenth in points four and fourth in defense. Like yep. they were awesome great on defense, defense yeah. for yep. most of the season. As soon as Tracy went down, they couldn't kick That's a goal. It. Mm. Geelong 10, 12, and 1 <laughs> in their premiership defense last year, finishing 12th. Then this year, they rode the roller coaster dead there to Ketland, five and oh, 15 and 8, losing the prelim. That was an awesome game. Yep. Great game. Crazy game. How much fun was that? I'm gonna <laughs> give them a B plus because yep. I think going into this season, we I think we we're all very middling on Geelong. It, it was felt tough. Like you yeah. couldn't, it was hard to get a grasp on their list. And then once you see them play, you're like, that's pretty good. Don't mind this. Ollie Dempsey, weapon, wins a rising star. You've got like young dudes like Zach Guthrie and stuff, sort of still like improving, getting better. Ollie Henry had like awesome moments. You got Shannon Neal doing some good stuff. They make the prelim. It wouldn't have been out of the realm of the possibility for them to win that game and at least make a grand final. Beat yeah. Sydney. Like, well, who, yeah, who knows true. what would happen, right? True. I'm going to give them the B plus because it was a really good season. It could have been better. Yep. You know, like almost losing in the prelim, you're like, oh, you might have. Ooh, did you leave one on the table? You might have left one on the table. <laughs> Alex. Giving them a B as well. Um, prior to the season, I was like, oh, I think they'll bounce back and get into the top eight because the year prior they'd had an injury year from hell as well. Uh, everyone's on the on the pitch. They got a lot of games into a lot of their younger dudes as well that are coming through. Yep. So. A lot of good things to come there. They also had a selection squeeze at the end of the year, which is a good problem to have. So, yeah, give them a B. They've made a prelim. You're just like, oh, yeah, Geelong made a prelim, like, tick. Yeah. Yep. Stats boy? I'm going A. I, I think for the same reasons, but I just think n a lot of people wouldn't have said they were going to make a prelim. Like, people were going, oh, look at their midfield. It's crap. They Max Holmes stepped up, and then you've got Ollie Dempsey. A lot of the younger guys stepped up. You would have gone, oh, Tomahawk's still going to have to play a lot of games. No. He didn't, they didn't even get in the team at the end. Like, like of Shannon Neal didn't obviously do that much, but you can just see building blocks. And that is like a huge, huge win. Like all Geelong fans are going. They keep doing yeah, this. They keep doing How this. How do they exactly. keep doing this? So like Dempsey was really low in the draft. This sucks. It was hardly I hate it. Lawson it's Humphreys. A, it's Lawson exactly Humphreys what they was did last the time. It's like, I oh, will just keep reloading as we've still got the old good dudes yeah. here for a bit. So that's why it's an A. Just everything what? they do at Geelong. Jerks. When you think they're going to drop off because they're like, oh, without danger, uh, playing at his best, they're going to be crap. They just I got Max it. Holmes step up. So that's an absolute Areas to improve is have someone better than Blitzarves or Stanley in the ruck. They've Ooh. been saying that for ages. They're yeah. gumbies. I know, I know. But we'll give you a pito for a bag of chips. Stanley, <laughs> Stanley, pito for Sam Decoding. Who says no? They Let's both go. actually. Were, they both actually improved this year from last year. No, they did. I think they did. So what went right. wrong? Right, positive, negatives. I think for the cats. I think what went they, right? A lot of stuff. A lot of stuff went right. They realized that a middle period that was really bad. Yeah. They lost to Carlton. Like Carlton looked at their absolute best when they beat along the second time they played them this yeah. season. Uh, but outside of that, when SDK and a bunch of their dudes were all healthy, they looked awesome. So, But then SDK couldn't get back in the team. Exactly. That oh, was crap year, yeah. third on offense, which was a bit of a surprise, and they were 11th in defense. So I think they need probably a little bit more size down back. Well, that's SDK getting in the team. That's it. And they also have a bit more speed. You've got Bailey There's Smith. And we're looking at how to improve for 2025. Yep. Bailey Smith in that is midfield. Like decked out and cotton on. And Even AFL ready to has been posting like eye emojis about Bailey Smith and saying like he's pretty much gone to Geelong. Why can't we just announce it already? Yeah, just don't rely on Danger and Tom Stewart as much and yeah. you're laughing. I think that's where they move this season. So if they get Bailey Smith and maybe even Clary, question mark. My <laughs> beloved Gold Coast Suns. Oh, oh love no. Him. Do we have to talk about that? <laughs> 9 and 14 last year, 15th. An improvement, 11 and 12 to 13th. Brutal. Most wins ever. Most wins ever, Which though. is sad. Uh, oh. They still get a D from me. A lot of D. It's just, you love the D stats, boy. <laughs> what are you talking about? The, the year promised so much. The wins at home are amazing. AFL Today Show. What do we come up with on this program all season? 28th parallel. Undefeated, mostly. Uh, <laughs> 28th parallel. Yeah, yeah. Having, a, having now been above the 28th parallel and been to their home ground, I'm like, bloody hell, it is hot up here. It's not easy to win. <laughs> It's going to be tough to play footy. And, <laughs> but they showed their best. And then every time they went away, basically, they showed their worst. And it was just oh. a tale of two seasons. 
And so they need to meld that. And until they do, they're not going to get a better than a D. They need to hang out with my best mate, Ned Moyle, a little bit more, and away we go. <laughs> Jed Walter, he's going to be crushing dudes next year. He and Dimmer matching bloody Jet's jet skis. He's going to be sick. That's the one thing, though, that some of the young guys, are they a bit overrated? Some of, like, I know they're still- It's their like, first year stats, yeah, guy. When they're, you've got- They're tall key forwards. I know, but they need, they'll need some of the young- I'm just saying, I'm looking at a lot of their young guys. Are they going to be like stars? So they move on from Lukosius- okay. They've got more. Because I don't, don't have Lukosius. Yeah. Uh, you've got. They're going to get Dan Rioli and Johnny Noble. Exactly. They've got yeah, no. Maybe a run off half back. Maybe just, Dusty. Uh, nah. You just have Dusty's these moments gone. where I feel like second year Dimmer, their team will make a lot more sense next year. Yeah. But for now, D. Alex? F. Massive oh. foul. They, ha- they had the list and the draw to well, make you the want, top you eight. You said they were going to make finals? Yeah. yeah. Had the list and the draw to do it. Couldn't do it. Went away from home. There you go. That's boy. Yeah, I'm going in the middle. E. I just think, yeah, we've just gone right Gives in the middle. I don't know. It's, it's, that works, doesn't it? My high school teacher. Yeah, there we go. He, 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 all of them. <laughs> all of them just gave him gave me so many E's. Yeah, I just think definitely underperformed. I didn't have him in the top eight. <laughs> oh, not those E's. But they should be just winning a few more games away. <laughs> uh, of course. Yeah, what went wrong right is like 28th parallel, <laughs> right. Below it, wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And then oh, just a lot of nothing touches, like I've said before. Took Flanders. Milligo, took, Mal- took Milligo's out. He wasn't at his one. best this year. Matty Rowell though. had like these ups and downs. Yep. Noah Anderson was fantastic at home. Stuck, stunk it up away. Stupid Sexy Flanders had these like moments as well. A lot of the ball, not that much impact sometimes. Humphreys was king. has got to get home. more of the footy. Their defense could just get so much better though with Mac Andrew. They've just got like a really, they've got a Their really defense solid is good. Back, yeah. back line, I think. And if you look at the stats, where do they rank actually yeah, in terms yeah. of the ranking of average points against? They did end up twelfth. Really, and for points four. They were 11. Because you've got Sam Collins, perfect. who's one of the so, best full backs. I but. feel like, though, that I'd love to sort of know, yeah, what were they at home? We talked about the 50 yeah. point win differential yeah. difference. That's what they are. So, yep. how do they get better next year? Defensively, for me, that's a big thing. If they get Johnny Noble, the weapon, they get Rioli, maybe Dusty. It just gives them like a <clears throat> some more solid depth. Simple yep. as that. Is that pointing us? Oh, just maybe try and hold on to some more players. Everyone that goes there, other than Mac Andrew, they just. What signed for seven years or something? Nineteen. Yeah, nineteen years. Uh, yeah, try and get just keep more players. That's what that's what I would say. That's Alex. not that easy though. I've just given up on it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. GWS thirteen and ten last year, lost in the prelim. This year fifteen and eight, and out in straight sets. Mm. Blew a forty-four point lead to the Brisbane Lions. That's not great. Blew a big lead to the Swans. That's not great. I'm going to give them a C minus for this season because. They looked at times like the best team in the league. And then they also had ones where you're like, do you guys have no, but there's four quarters. Yeah, they just play four. three quarters apparently. Yeah. Four of them. It's like Carlton play one good quarter. You guys play three. That's an improvement. But there is a fourth. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> so C minus for me. Toby Green had like a really weird year. New dad. New dad stuff. What have I said? Didn't work at all. Mm. And I was just, you come out of it, you've got a Coleman medalist. You've got a really gun midfield. Come back on, fast in back on. Straight sets. It was yep. brutal. So, actually, I might I even. Alex. D, had them as my premier at the start of the season, and the way that they fell off was very. I mean, the Swans beat them, so I was pretty happy about that. But <laughs> I didn't enjoy watching it because I, th- I think clearly they were going into the season the best team, and they couldn't show it. They showed it a couple of times. You're like, oh, and you didn't see it enough. And then you blow a 44 point lead in a final at home. Not good enough. Maybe they're all too afraid of Adam Kingsley. Possibly. Hey, He's a scary man. He is. Stats boy. I'm going F. That is a massive fail. Their premiership window, as we discussed the other day, it's closing. That That is such a disappointment for, to, not, to not win a final. Like, they've had so many years. I reckon every year you look at the odds of GWS, they're probably like always like third or fourth. There you go. Oh, at, the have, start of, have, at the start of yeah. 2023, they were not. No, but um, they're always up there in the odds, maybe top five, six. But you go, oh, I might have a bet on GWS. They could take a win the flag. Their list is amazing. They continue and continue just to fail. And uh, going out in straight sets, that is just not good enough for the list that they have. So the 27 GWS fans out there, how are they feeling? That fan- <laughs> oh, they <laughs> are brutal. flat as after yeah. going out in straight sets, giving up li- big leads in both finals, going, how, how the well, hell did yeah. that happen? So how do they get better, though? Because like we keep seeing just dudes like just leaving. Like that's the GWS mm. kind of vibe. It's like Go it's, Carlton. It's just off they go. <laughs> and I don't know. How do you actually get better? I don't see a world in which they get better. I think this was their year. I know Stephen Canelio, he looked like he played out the last half of the season injured. But they don't has he hit his much. peak? Yeah, yeah, it's probably. Uh, Tom Green's going to have to lift. He's the big one. Is Jesse Hogan going to have as good as a year this year as he did? Toby, obviously, he needs to get back to some sort of level. We need Brett Daniels. Can he do it again? Are we going to see some? 
consistency out of, you know, uh, Riccardi, Ide, and a few of those yeah, role for players. For me, it's like Riccardi and stuff like just Finn Callahan. Finn Callahan. Oh, he had a really so good end to the year. I don't. I don't see GWS getting better. I think they have one more year, maybe not better, one more year to go for the flag and then they're probably cooked. I think Because even Jesse Hogan, that's not going to last like There's long. a base level of talent there that I don't think means they bottom out. No, but it's just a worry because Next they're year. almost yeah. off the edge this of the, was the cliff. Year. Yeah. Uh, did they leave a flag on the table? Yes. Possibly. That's when why I chucked them in When you're F. beating the Lions by 44 points. That means you're good. <laughs> the Lions went on to win the flag. I don't yep. know if you heard about that. Anyway. Hawthorne. Hawkball! Oh, that's an easy one. is this? 7 and 16 last year, 14 and 9, win a <laughs> final, losing a semi after an 0 and 5 start? Yes. Yeah, uh, one, and, yeah one and 6. Yeah. The two. best team in footy over the back half of the season. Me, it very, was most fun team. Remarkable. They were the best story. They were the most fun. Yep. We're doing selfies. <laughs> everyone's like- <laughs> Everyone's got a celebration. Everyone's like, let's do a fun selfie. This is going to be awesome. I give them an A. That was a really fun season. To turn it all around from where they were, where they look lost, befuddled, bemused, angry, <laughs> at sea, all of the above. To turn around, make the eight and win a final was awesome. Yep. To beat the dogs from just like- Crazy. Absolutely smash. Like, that was unreal. That's a great year, Alex. A plus. I uh, didn't see this coming whatsoever. Yep. We talked about them before the start of the season going, hey, we thought maybe they'd jump up this year, but then they had the injury preseason from hell. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And they've still charged into a semifinal. Mm. A Crazy. plus. We did talk about this last year. And they could have won the semifinal with a bit of luck. Yeah. Yep. We talked about this last year on the old, old shows. Uh you know, oh, Hawks, yeah, they, yeah, they could drop it to eight next year. But, yeah, but it's always a bit premature. Uh, and they went and did it. That was insane. So I don't what. know if many people said they were going to jump in the eight. We were looking at their list going who has, like, the better list of those bottom sort of four teams. And people were still, like, debating it all. And then the Hawks just go up. So it's got to be an A. It has to be A or A+. plus. I don't even mind an A+. plus. They were just unbelievable. The, the culture, I think the culture was the thing, like, people say A one. double plus. Like, A double just, plus, yeah. We can honestly. I'm going to upgrade it because it was just. Just the, the culture. Expectation and yeah. the way that it ended up rolling was yeah. unreal. The culture that they had just to, like, all be like these little annoying guys that just, I don't know, everyone just came together and everyone was on the same page. It was the most chemistry of any team, I think, in the AFL, maybe other than Brisbane or Sydney. And they're the only going to yeah. get better. Mm. Jeez, yeah, this stinks. This is crazy, yeah. So who are they adding stats, boy? A uh, bit of Barras and Battle. So uh, Tom Barras is a freak. Battle, pretty solid player as well. Going to build their defense. Obviously, uh, they might even put Sicily forward. I don't know about Sicily. Hawks fans, what they think about that. Sicily. But I, when he played forward, he looked really strong. Hex, and they Tassie don't have any Sicily. really strong, like, tall forwards. So I wouldn't mind that. And they're going to be really good next year. Are they? Yeah. yeah. Or you hunter, think they might drop The hunter drop becomes off. the hunted. It's always a really hard transition in the AFL. A lot of their guys aren't even in their prime. Like, you know, Cal Shadir is going to have a huge year next year. But now there's, like, more We've got the Wiz, right? Wiz All Australia next you year. You were on a hiding the nothing this year, right? Like, yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. 0 and 5, we suck, Underdog whatever. Vibe, yeah. And then you're like, zero expectations. You get to play free footy. Yeah. You can do what you want. Yeah, you start everyone's also got together. nine months of data just to look at what they do and how to figure out a way to stop yeah. them. Because you look at the year before when the Swans started playing this weird, expensive running footy. Two years ago, made a grand final and then got completely shut down last year. But the fan base is flying. Oh, they're, they're, oh they're so happy. Like the thing is, Leo's got his shirt off. <laughs> their list is more solid. It's deeper next year. That'll be awesome. So yeah, and I think those young guys are just going to get better. Yeah, yeah. presumably. Melbourne. <laughs> Oh, geez. 16 and 7, went out in straight sets last year. <laughs> this year, didn't even make the eight. They went 11 and 12 and finished in a very disappointing 14th. Uh, they had, they amazingly finished in points four in 14th. And in points against, they were eighth, which was a bit of a surprise. They but still have like, their good defense. They still have a half yeah. decent defense. But it also no, top six defense their most game of them. sucked to watch. What do we say about Melbourne? Get a forward. Get a forward. A single forward. <laughs> One. One. Jack Darling's like, I'm going to go to North. That's how much you guys suck. <laughs> uh, F minus. <laughs> this was horrible. Honestly, is that? I don't even care because if that's not a thing. They deserve less like than Carlton, you lose 17 <laughs> dudes, right? Melbourne, decent. Lose Petrarca at all. Completely falls apart. Clary has a horrible, horrible also, year. Also, Brayshaw. Oh, I didn't have a preseason. It's round 18. Who cares yeah. at that point? Like, what are we Bra Bra Brayshaw. Angus Brayshaw retires. It yeah, just that was sucks. like, a, what, six weeks before the season? That was, that was brutal, yeah. Ashcroft was different, though. He's rehabbing, getting ready. Clary should have been in another rehab. Whoa, bang. It was just a <laughs> real bad year. Yeah. Alex? F. It's completely an F. 
Stats boy. Can I go G below an F? Is that is that possible? Can't go the alphabet. Yeah, Z. <laughs> Can I go Z? Down there, Sesame Street. Nah, definitely. <laughs> Jeez, what's the letter of the day? Definitely F. Like, uh, all right, they had a lot of injuries, but I think it does come down to their list is still like not that bad. I think their forward line is cooked. They need to get some more goal scorers outside of uh, Rue and Cozzy. But which we've said about for years. I think Rue, Cozzy, and Bailey Fritch. It's, yeah. It shouldn't be as bad as it is. No. Like, it's weird. I think Rue still has a bit of development to go, so that's part of it. And then, uh, yeah, just it's all behind the scenes, I think. Their list isn't that bad. They won a flag not that long ago. They are in the finals all those years, like, just before. It's all behind the scenes. I think just the chemistry's <laughs> off, the coach is off, the, the board is off, well, everything's Kate just off. Ro- Kate roffey has gone. Gary yeah. Perch trying to sell Clary for a bag of chips and 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah. Petrarca doesn't want to be there because everything sucks. Gorn, yeah. Lever, and May were sideswiped by Angus Brayshaw's uh, speech yep. at the Brownlow. They didn't know it was happening. Oh, that's Did right. They? No one had been told about that. Yes. He came in through a side entrance and left via a side entrance. So he didn't mm. even talk to him. That's weird. It's oh, crazy. That that's is, that that's is. just sad. Mm. That's it's the first time we'd spoken publicly. That's weird. It's just like Taylor Adams vibes. It's not, not turning up to the Some game. Some stinks in Melbourne. Yeah. Just saying. So 2025, how do you get better? I don't know. Oh, it's hard. Get a forward. Just, just get a forward. Like, get a forward. Like, go, go off of your first draft pick to some kill. Like, can we have King a memory? They also know. need to somehow get their players happy. Because you had Viney, Pickett, and Petrarca all have committed to next year. But literally a well, couple no, of Viney weeks. Viney signed an extension. He's like, oh, I might go to North. Yeah. Like, Money. More money. But a couple <laughs> of weeks ago, but that's my point. They'll have all the money in the world to offer them, but they'll be like, oh, so doesn't be happiness come down for like they've got new, they've finally got the new training facilities in the works, right? Like this is a big thing for them. Because so going to, to Cranbourne is depressing. Cranbourne is the most depressing place <laughs> on earth. Shout out to everyone from Cranbourne. Frankston's right there. <laughs> There's no Just footy saying. team training in Frankston. Mm, seagulls, isn't it? Yeah, but that's VFL doesn't count. Yeah. Dolphins. Dolphins, that's, that's right, yeah. Is it Williamstown the Seagulls? Yeah, yeah. Williamstown. Anyway, yeah. Frankston's de- uh, <laughs> Frankston and Cranbourne are both depressing. <laughs> no one wants to go there. It is that crazy. Get brought up? Like, I think if you have to like commute that far, it just stinks. Like, life That's just like 45 stinks. minutes. I think it's a bit deeper. And there's always roadworks on that highway. Yeah, <laughs> but their thing is just health, get rid of the culture problems, yeah. try to fix it. I think they need I'm, to try and keep I'm putting TNT to the joint, blowing it up. <laughs> North. Oh. That was 17th last year, 3 and 20. This year, 3 and 20, 17th. How could that be the same? It's weird. Do we have to talk about it? Yes. I, I literally said uh, this time last year, oh, at least we can't get any worse. We didn't get worse, uh, but we literally I, did I, exactly I, the same. I would argue you were worse no, I don't this think, year. I don't think we were worse. No, I'm going to give them a C How? because it, was, it didn't get worse. I think you got nah. more. This is like you yelling yeah, at me about that's Fremantle. That, that's outrageous. Everyone, you even said that at the start of the year, a lot of people said that six to eight wins is the pass mark. And oh, now, not now six to eight wins. For or it was five to seven or I something think, like that. I all think, I've done all season is dump on Alistair Clarkson because yeah. I think he's a fraud. Simple as that. Fair enough. Is that the moon? And uh, <laughs> but at the same time, I think <clears throat> the way that you turn that season around halfway through and finally got some honourable losses on yeah, the Yeah, it was like three weeks though. Got a win here and there. I think at least <laughs> you have like the sort of between Combin, LDU, Sheaves, mm. no, The Suba. list is okay, yeah. There's bits and bobs there. You go, all right, you can see where it's getting better. The <sighs> Warlord. Like – it feels like this is the sort of setup to like. This is exactly what I said about Frio. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> no, I don't understand a pass. I, I can understand maybe just under a pass, but yeah, I don't understand a pass. Mark. All right, D. Yeah, yeah no, you, can, you can go see. Back because I wanted to be vaguely up <laughs> because I feel like the expectation for them wasn't this massive, right? And the like, expectation that was, was them to win five to six games this yeah, year. Yeah, I think it was. And we, I'm pretty sure. Oh, was, D. We, we, yeah, yeah. Well, you said they would. But anyway. I'm happy to take the D there. <laughs> and uh, because. Okay. There were. Horrible losses, and they should have been. Yeah, there. they stank. same time they did put up. We're a bit showing of a fight. something. That's the only positive. And you sort of saw little bits and bobs, Alex. D. I didn't see enough improvement out of them. Yep, that's boy. I'm going E. Just as a North fan, who gives an E? Yeah, I don't know. Or F. I'll go F. One of the one of the lowest uh, marks you can get. Just because I don't think it's an F. The game plan and the hype that Clarko tried to sort of build at the start of the season with uh, what was it, North Ball or Clarko Ball, whatever we want to call it. I think it was North. Was it, North it was North Ball, ball but we didn't Ruball. like it. Yeah, Rue Ball sounds that was a bit mine. better. Um, <laughs> It just, I don't know, the, we didn't change our game plan at all throughout the season when we're getting smashed. I don't yeah, know, There's a lot. there right. is a lot to look forward to in terms of all the young players, but just like guys like Jaden Stevenson, he was a rising star. He's dropped off a cliff. We've got Dylan Mate, Stevens. Lewis Taylor was a rising star. Yeah, Where's true. He? Oh, he was all right for a few years, but then you've got uh, Dylan Stevens, one of the worst recruits of the year. Like, I thought he was going to be all right. Just, Pick nine it feels like anyone that's coming to a club is Pick just going really bad. Yep. And that's what I'm worried about with Darling. 
not so worried about with Parker because he's uh, yeah. Darling is going to be there to take some pressure off Suva. It's basically <laughs> no, like, I know, I Suva's know. not going to get triple team because Jack Darling can pop up and kick two or three goals. Zerha is the most in and out player in the competition. Whereas at least Darling go, just just put it here. I'll yeah. get the Dukes up. You know, that one of the small blokes can get front and center to me and snap it around the corner. I just don't like Zerha's face. Yeah, it looks like he's in super. Trips. Well, he is definitely <laughs> not a second uh, tall, so, so we need him as yeah, a third. At, tall. Adding Parker. Is a great addition because yep, yep. he will also Leadership. he will raise training standards. Yeah, he I will agree. not you be get a Dan Houston, same sort of thing. Yep. Dan Houston is yeah definitely on the cards apparently. The other one and was Caleb Daniel. Yeah, Caleb Daniel just did, we need tolls. That's the other thing. We need tolls. <laughs> you pick we, the smallest. We pick the smallest the person in the league. Uh, yeah, Larky also. I gave us an E because Larky dropped off as well. I yeah. know everyone's like, oh, he's going to kick hundred goals or eight, maybe eighty goals. Bad, but no idea that. Anyway, yep. all right. Port Adelaide, last year, 17 and 6, lost in a semi because they went out in straight sets. This year, oh, 16 and 7, he was Knuff. They made a prelim. I gave them a B for this year. Yeah. I have no idea. What they turned doing. it around. Like we saw them, obviously, at, um, gather, around. gather around, and they looked awesome. Yeah, they, they looked great. smashed Essendon. That was Essendon. It looked unreal. And then it all got a bit squirrely, and then they turned it around after uh, Ken sort of had Retired. the blowtorch applied. Make the prelim. It was fine. I think there's another team that got cruel by injuries time and time again in that forward line, but they've also just – they almost set themselves up for failure, I think, with the Radagalia, mm -hmm. Zerk Thatcher. Like, it helped raise their sort of floor. Didn't raise the ceiling. But it, their ceiling stayed almost the same. Yeah. Weird. So – uh, B for me, Alex. B plus, they won a final. We, I said at the start, was like, oh, yeah, they'll win 14, 15 games, make the top four, but they need to win a final or make a prelim for it to be uh, a pass mark. They made a prelim. Yeah, it's weird when you make a prelim, you win a final, but you lose two finals. Yeah. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah. Anyway, that's boy. Uh, I'm just going to see. I just think it was a pass. Like You guys are saying, oh, they did this and it was all right. I, I can't give them any more than... Like a pass. How is because how is making a prelim when, when everyone was like, oh, they'll get to that, but they're not going to win a flag? No, but it's just like... No one ever thought they were going to win the flag. I think, yeah, I agree that making a prelim is really good, but it's just this list is never yeah, never going to win a flag. So I'm just saying... So then it's a good job making a prelim. Oh, I, I don't know how to explain myself now. Too I'm sure. going around in circles. But yeah, I'm just giving them a C. I, just, I think the list can be better. They, they can do a lot better. They rely too much on Butters and Rosie when they have Rosie some good Rosie was players. horrendous this year. I'm going to stand oh, on that. He was injury, horrendous. Injury cruel in the After that the Essendon league. game where he was like, this like, is the best player in the mm. league. Yeah. After that, when he did his hammy, they're like, no, no, it's fine. It they wasn't fine. Back, they cooked it. Now they get his best mate, Lukosius, in. That'll be pretty fun. He's that's, a great addition. That's how they get better in 2025, right? Yep. They yep. put in little bits and pieces around like Mitch Georgiades and Jack stuff. Jack Lukosius kicking 30 to 40 goals. I love that. Let's so, go. Oh, that's a lot of goals. Ken... The problem is, like, whether or not he's a lame duck coach, that could be a problem again. Like, there's only so far you can ride the emotion. Ken is a great coach, I think. The consistency they need that we've talked about yeah. is he's had so many finals. I, I do think it's time for a change, probably, but we I don't think it's just... I think they need to get, like, another good good defender, like an actual defender. Not, ah, yeah. oh, radically it might work. No, it's not going to work. Also, Jordan Sweet having the full year in Ruck no, yeah. now that Soldo's leaving. Soldo's out again. Yeah. Uh, Houston trade on the cards, obviously. Yeah. We'll see what happens but, he's, there. but Houston might stay if they don't get the deal. So yeah. if they keep Houston, Kane Farrell to come back as well, it all augurs well for them. Is so the fan base, base <laughs> what do you do? Yeah. Are you just going to be looking at this and go, oh, I guess next year's going to be okay. Yeah. yeah, but like this is the fan base. They'll all be going. Oh, I think we'll be, but we could make a prelim again. But I, they cannot progress further than that. If I don't you're, think. they're if not I, good enough. If we had two fans of Port Adelaide, they won't go. We we suck. We're really good. And you know what? You're both probably, probably right. Probably, <laughs> probably somewhere in the middle. Yeah, something like that. Uh, but you still have better Horn Francis, presumably. Yeah. Yeah, Rosie, he was really good. Rosie yeah. and Butters, if they're healthy. Georgi awesome. Arti's also because he was back. He was back. Really off really off yeah. Georgi Arti was back off an ACL this year too. So Lukosius in between Georgi Arti and Lukosius kicked awesome. 39 goals two years ago. If they can get that type of Lukosius, then that massively improves yep. the team. Nice one. Richmond from the dizzying heights oh, of 13 no. <laughs> two years ago, 10, 12, and 1, to the worst record in club history. Or oh, Richmond Footy Club are in a bit of a spot of bother this year. Yep. Boys Footy Club. Yeah, Footy Club. <laughs> Two and 21. It's not good. That's an F. Because even with the low expectations, they were still really bad. Yeah. Like, they were also cruel by injury, but at the same really time, when they weren't cruel yeah. by injury, they were still not It's cool. like, we didn't expect much, but holy crap, that was bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Two and exactly. 21 is... Alex, it's, 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 an, oh, it's an F. Yeah. yeah. So e easy F from all of us, I think. You... 
You look at their even blooding kids. Like if you yeah. have a year like that, and you go, "Oh, we blooded some young blows." They did, but none of them really. It is tough crazily for a, popped. This is the two ways of looking at it. It's tough for like all the young guys to come in when you're getting smashed. Obviously, it's hard to get a touch and things like that. But a lot of their young guys, no one's like, no one was talking up beforehand. Like, yep. uh, there's no hype around this. Now. I think we said That's that about because West they, they last would, year. they'd finished thirteenth and they traded away every yeah. draft pick for Toronto and Hopper. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So this. We'll look back at them differently this time next year. If they've won three games this time next year, we'll be like, yeah, but insert three dudes that came in yeah. and were really good. That's this is like a, yeah, it is a weird one because it's like a cautionary tale of trying to extend the window by bringing in Hopper and Taranto. But Taranto and Hopper is really good. Yeah. The problem is they didn't they just play get injured enough, at all and the it's time. Like, oh, and press then, the but, but then it's like du- Dusty just you know he phoned it in. He got his three and it's like peace out, boys. Shy Bolton wasn't good enough. Nank dropped off. I thought. But then the other players you thought would lift, like Noah Bolter didn't go to a new level. He was he was Tom, good though. Tom, Tom like the lights of Jaden Short and stuff like Tom that. Tom Lynch you well. hardly they saw too much. Tom Lynch didn't play. Uh, but they, their thing yeah. is like they lose Gibkiss. Uh, they also lost Gibkiss was a big. Uh, who was the other young dude that did his knee? Like, oh, when his oh, knee just Lafau. went sideways. Like, yeah. oh, Lafau was gone really well. Like, yeah. The young dudes yeah. like that that both like gone injured. You're true, like, dude, that's just unlucky. Yeah. So. But Tom Brown was a solid. So I much like of it, you just like look at it and go, that is a tough base to work from because they, I think, lost the most games yeah. to injury out of everybody. But even then, they still look really yeah. bad regardless. So the fan yeah. base is like, oh, it's going to get way worse before yeah. it gets better. Yeah, they are going to lose. Lose all their players. Their yeah. dudes, Baker, Bolton, Graham, Rioli, all expected to bounce. Not expected. Graham is gone. gone. Graham's gone. Yeah. Bolton and Baker are pretty much gone. Would Tom you, Lynch should just yeah. be like, can I please go? That's the other thing. I may, would I, sh- may I be excused? I would ship him to the D's, and if I'm Richmond, I'd be yeah, to I'd the D's, I'd be like, all right, we are going to pay 70% of his contract because he's on big money. We want your first pick. Ooh. Get another pick in. Just get all the picks in. But Tom Lynch is not worth that anymore. He's yeah, but if, old but if you're paying crap. 70% of $1.4 million, you can ask for that. Yeah. That's Don't interesting. Yeah. That's got the all thing. The, yeah. Just, get, all, just get all the picks. Just, every, just picks. They already have all the picks as well, right? So when yeah. someone like Ralphie just like lists out what they could likely have going into this draft, you're yeah. like, that's, that's just all. So right now they've only got pick one, but you expect pick six is going to be there for Rioli. You expect somehow they're going to get one of West Coast's uh, – Picks for uh, what was it? Baker, Baker. Yeah, their later one, and right? then it's like, or what are they? Well. And then they're probably going to get like ten and sixteen for Bolton. So it's like they're going to have probably five first round picks. If you trade a few others, try and get some futures in there as well. Yep. I respect that they're just okay with like people leaving. They it's going to be okay. Ari Gold with the paintball gun. Just like, yeah. St yeah. Kilda, thirteen and ten last year, lost in the Elim final that we were at in a big big orange, sound orange tsunami. That was yes. awesome. Yeah. And then this year, a bit underwhelming, eleven and twelve and twelfth. And though in the back half of the season, well, awesome. Go figure. It's very sainty. Yeah. Uh, very not sainty. enough, though. Not enough. Not enough to give me more than a C. They won five of their last six. They're amazing. Oh, I didn't know it was that good. It was also like yeah, so many teams that sort of gone into those St. Kilda games going, that's St. Kilda. Q in the rack. We're like, oh, God, what just happened? And off they went. It felt like they coalesced a little bit. They figured out the Ross thing. Like offensively as well, it sort of actually got fun-ish. Yeah, second half to the definitely. point where in the second half of the season, like their games weren't horrible to watch. They still landed fifteenth offensively, but I think that's seventy-six <laughs> points a game. That's a big difference between the bottom three, though. That's six. That's yeah. a goal over a goal a game difference between yep. them. And defensively, <laughs> they were still fifth. So they still had the defense to hang their hat on. The offense improved over the back half. Does that? You know, give you more of a pass fail. What do you reckon, stats boy? Oh, I'm saying fail. If I'm going D, I just think you make the finals. Your yeah, your next pass mark should be to make the finals again, especially yeah. when your young list. I think their list isn't actually that bad. I know we always like to go, oh St Kilda, they always look crap. They just need to play that attacking thing. That's what I was going to say to improve for 2025. If Ross gets out of his stubborn mind, that they've got really good halfbacks. That's uh, the good thing is the old white guys are really <laughs> good at changing the way they do things. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So that's the uh, worry. But they did change it towards the end of the year. When they play at Marvel and they're playing their running game, they're actually a fun team to watch, which yeah. is so rare for a Ross line team. So that's why I'm giving them a, a just a D a fail because they just couldn't play that enough. If that's they play what, that, I was more impressed. Over that second half, then yeah, because the, the way they made finals last year, we even uh, that build up to the finals last year, they were playing exciting footy. So Alex, yeah, 
it's a fail going from finals to missing out like that. Like you look at the games when they lost to Essen at Docklands, a game they should have won, losing by a point to GWS. I know they came yeah. from nowhere that day, but then they had the loss to Port Adelaide at Docklands in the worst game ever. Yep. You win a couple of those games that they should yeah, they have won. they lost two games less, well, they won two games less than they did last year, but there was also like three or four games you're like, how did you lose that? Yep. What are you doing? It didn't help that so. Max King as well forgot how to play footy. Because their list, I think, is actually just looking at their list. Their list is actually good. You got Rowan Marshall, Jack Steele. You've got uh, they have a pretty strong backline, as we said, and things like well, that. The, great, the greatest and killed a player of all time, Matthias Philippou. Philippou, Mitch Owens. I just think Weapon. their list is okay to Mitch push for finals. So that their yeah. fan base is like, let's just look at the last six games. Yeah, their their fan base is St Kilda fans. So yeah. Like, <laughs> Whatever. They never <laughs> We're get on a excited. Yeah. Regardless, this yeah. sucks. Oh, They're like, at least we have- They're Essen. excited that Jack Rewald's back in the commentary box. Nick. Yeah. He, Nick, yeah. Nick, the other one. <laughs> Rewald. There you go. That's what I was trying to say. But they don't play, they don't play Channel 7 primetime games. It's like Joey Montagna. True. They're like, Lenny Hayes, where's he at? Come on, get him. He's coaching. <laughs> He's coaching. We've already got Nick. BJ Gallup. Gallup. Off you go. Uh, that's how they get better next year. Uh, pray. They also need to hope that they get pick nine for Josh Battle, but after their presidents whack the AFL, I reckon the the, <laughs> the herbs and spices might be like, yeah, yeah nah. rip, pick 20. Nice. Good one, Saints. Sydney, 12-10-1 um, last year, lost in the Elim this year, the best team in 150 years. Or so we thought. 17-6, <laughs> <laughs> top of the ladder all year, gets smashed in a grand final. Because of that, they get a B plus. There is an amazing amount of fallout from this game as well. Uh, a lot more questioning of horse than I probably expected, even though we did it on Monday. It's just there's a lot more noise and it's gone on yeah. for like two extra days. I'm like, this is getting well, to be Well, Alex weird. made some good points to me before about like just it's social media or media the in The biggest general. problem is ever since the Swans posted, oh, yeah, we're hurting, you know, it sucks that we lost. We know you're all hurting too. We'll be back bigger and better next year. Thanks for supporting us this year. It's been amazing. They haven't posted anything <laughs> on social media since. There's been nothing. I'm trying to what until you want today to when it's like, yeah, Luke Parker wants a trade. Thanks for all your services, Luke. I don't know what I want or need is, but I want something. <laughs> you, know, you know what you want? What? Pictures of sad swans. But I don't. I just like a sad swan, just yeah. like slowly swimming past. But I don't want. Can radio. a swan look sad? That's can you shut up? <laughs> can they look <laughs> sad? Yeah, they can. How do you make a swan look sad? I don't want radio <laughs> silence. Like, I don't want radio <laughs> silence from a team that, for the fourth time in a decade, third time being embarrassed on Grand Final Day. Three of the Swans' biggest six losses have been on Grand Final Day since Longmire took over. Maybe let's do a poll for Swans fans I want just to say so, I want horse something in or out. I want something from Should the Should we club. make adjustments in-game or not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. From the fair. So the fan base <laughs> are pissed right now about that. Did you even say what your uh, rating was? We've you gave an A minus. Yeah, <laughs> I gave them an A minus because at the start. I of, think that's fair. That's at the fair. start of the year, if you said you're going to have this amazing year and play all this amazing footy and lose on grand final, like, that's pretty cool. And they'll kick you in the wang on grand final. <laughs> yeah. So it's still an A minus because I thought the season was good because Isaac Heaney became one of the best players yep. in the competition. Yep. Uh, then you had the improvement through Errol and Chad as well. I thought defensively they were really good. Harry Cunningham is underratedly the best small defender in the competition. Oh. Bang. Does it all matter oh, wow. if all that leads to you getting your heads kicked in on a grand final day? Well, it's just, yeah. That's, it's, the, that's, the, that's why I go with the B+. Plus that's why like, I'm going B+, plus as well, because I'm if, a it was a, a minus. if it was a close grand final, you'd be like, all right, lots of people thought Brisbane could win the grand final. Fair enough. Sydney yeah. had a good year, but Brisbane and just no was a better show. team on the day. And no it wasn't show, even a better team on the day. Sydney just were just horrible. Oh, we weren't so there. that's why I'm giving B+, because all the media, all the attention is to the loss compared to the year now. Whereas yeah. if they if they had a close loss, everyone would be like, like, all right, at least it was a good year. Now everyone's forgotten about Sydney having a good when year. When I was sitting down on Monday talking yeah. in like a Swans group chat with a few people, I'm like, you told me at the start of the year we're going to have this year, part yeah. from the grand final, awesome. Cope. Yep. Yeah. Cool. yeah. But uh, way to get better yeah, is- You reckon that's just called cope, that group text? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, nah, it's called Swans. <laughs> uh, we need The oh, Swans need to get another key defender in. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they, I'll give you that. Yeah. And- well, potentially Sam Frost, that, that'd help. But I would be like, hey, Geelong, Sam DeConing, question mark? That'd be cool. Sure. Uh, and then maybe just another inside midfielder, but it's Angus Sheldrick, who's already there on the I league. think your mid's fine. I think, I yeah, think mid, you're fine. I think you need to find consistency from your tall fours. I know your offense was fine, yeah. but you're, they're so up and down. You, also, yeah. maybe don't pick injured dudes on grand final day. <laughs> yeah. Again. It's That's not like point. it's happened, but oh, wait, it's happened the last three. Oh, no. Jeez, I'll tell you what, Chad Warner's going to look awesome in purple, though. Right. Why are we even talking about that? He's contracted. West Coast. That's next year. Yeah, exactly. We'll get seven draft three picks. 3 and 20 last year, 18th. 5 and 18 this year, but the five wins came a bit earlier than you'd expect, and then all just went to hell. They fire a coach. 
Mm-hmm. They bring in a coach who's not allowed to coach anymore because he's got tattoos. Yeah, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> D minus from me though because the five wins are an improvement. Yeah. But watching them wasn't much of an improvement, if mm. that makes sense. Like they had Oscar some Allen, close games. I'm Oscar Allen misses yeah. a bunch of the season. Uh, their veteran leaders like, yo, had a better year. But again, their young dudes weren't taking massive steps yeah. up. Barras is now gone anyway. Like, it just feels Jack gross. the Snake was good. J-Train. He was great. He, he was the big improver. I yeah, love yeah. the J-Train. Yeah. But outside of that, it felt like it was wildly whelming. Because <laughs> they had one draft pick inside 30 last year as well. It just happened to be Harley so Reid. So 17th on Who's that? defense and 16th on offense. Whoa, whoa Harley Reid. Whoa, Harley, <laughs> Bam Bam Bam. Like, it was like him getting rubbed out was just dumb. The German suplex. It's just stupid. It was a stupid year for West Coast is where I – and like Fair D enough. minus, like I just – I think that's a bit Because I feel like if there's a there's a pass mark for that team – they smashed Melbourne and Frio. Yeah, but that's the pass mark. If they do that to two more teams, you're like – so you if they beat it. Essen in that game, they probably should have won. Exactly. Mm. I'm a C plus. No. C plus? It's too high for me. I'm, I'm a C, C, yeah. They won five games. I, I think everyone thought I thought they'd win last. two. Yeah, I think everyone thought they were going to be last. We've talked, the big worry is the young guys coming through other than Harley Reid. Like, you got Oscar Allen is obviously a bit older now. Uh, Waterman's really good. Um, but just the young guys coming through, I'm really worried about. Like, everyone talks up Jimby. Is he going to be that good, really? Like, he's really hard at it. I don't know. There's just a lot of guys that they even tried him half back, tried him midfield. I don't think they know that his identity. They don't know the club's identity and things like that. So that's why I'm – I'll give him a C, though, I've, because I've, they had a lot of really close losses. And, uh, yeah. I think there's it. enough going through, but also you can't expect it to be McGovern and Yo yeah. doing a bunch next the year. The fact that McGovern is all Australian again and that that and then Yo's but getting every, it helped so them to get five The last – I think it was like five seasons that McGovern's played 16 or more games. He's oh. been an All-Australian. So it's him getting back on the park. Yeah. So their last, their last two wins that came in like round 21 and 22, it was like over North and it was over the Suns. Like that Suns game was just <laughs> the dumbest Suns it was, game. It was the other Saturday. Friday night game that no one saw. And, uh, that was weird, that game. So man. at that point they're up, you know, they'd had the three wins. You're like, hey, we've equaled last year, hooray. And then they finally got another two. And I just hated the way they went about it. Like the Adam Simpson sacking, everything sort of yeah. sucked. Oscar Allen not getting into a group. It's probably time for a change. He was there for a long time. Though. But anyway. So they way to improve for them. Get in as many picks as humanly possible. Yeah, Don't even think of giving up good draft picks agree, for, for Baker. You're getting Graham for free because he's a free agent. He's a good player. Yeah. Don't give away anything inside the top 15 picks, for Liam picks, Baker. Picks, 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 get picks, the picks, picks in. Get the kids in. You need more kids. They yeah. need five or six kids this year and probably another three or four the following year. If you build it, they will come. And that's and it. And they need to draft better because I think a lot well, of the that, young, young that, guys that's are what pretty, I mean. pretty you need crap. To, yeah. They, they I have guess the one more pick picks you have, the more chances are a good player. But you do have Chris Judd mixed with Gary Ablett on your team, so you like Yeah, <laughs> Harley <laughs> will be better. Along with Sticks Kernahan mixed with Stewie Lowe in uh, – There you go. In who? Big Oscar Allen. Oh, there you go. He's right there. Uh, yes. Final team, the Western Bulldogs. Oh, this 12 is and 11. One. They were ninth yeah. last year. 14 and 9 this year, losing the Elim. It was a bad loss, though. It was. I'm going to give them a B because they are the perfect – B team <laughs> all year. What were yeah. they? The line of demarcation. They, they finally, though, kicked it into gear. They were just above the line the of back demarcation. after the season, so they're above the line of demarcation. Things that worked were okay. oh, a sort of weird mix of Jamara, Aaron Norton, <clears throat> Sam Darcy. Sam That's Darcy is a massive positive. On, though, you go, yeah, yeah. He's awesome. Gun, weapon. If you said at the start of the year someone go to you, do you think Sam Darcy could be better than Jamara? You're like, uh, probably not. And yeah, now everyone's like, saying like, yeah. he probably is. It's yeah. crazy. Alex, your mark. Uh, B minus just because I did have them just outside of it at the top of the year. They've made the finals. You've seen good parts. You've seen bad parts. Like it's good that their forward line works that when their midfield got rolling, like they've done it on a year where Bont wasn't extremely dominant. So yeah, that's great to see. I yeah. uh, had Bailey Dale was awesome. I thought as well. Uh, Liam, Liam Jones was great as well. But is it a worry at the same time that one of your best defensive stalwarts is now Rory Lobb? Jones is also getting a lot older. So at the same time, at least they've found something that yeah, Rory Lobb It works good at. a bit. Yeah, and they're, yeah. they're paying him that much money. So thank God it's going to work for them. But it's like, okay, you probably need to get another defender in the doors as well. You're getting rid, rid of these dudes who have probably gotten a bit stale now with Bevo. So that's interesting to see. Yeah, I don't they know if probably that's need to yeah. play Sanders a bit more before he goes to Tassie. <laughs> Get more games into something. Like, what's a, what's a Buku Kamas? I'm still not really no, sure. I, what I he think is. he could be. I think he could be pretty good. Yeah. But that's yeah. your mark. Yeah, I'm going uh, C just because I've said this. I don't know. Maybe the last couple of years, they with their list, they should do better. They've got a really good list. When you can get rid of guys like Caleb Daniel McRae, 
Uh, Caleb Daniel I know people don't not rate in their best 23. Oh, I think he is. I think uh, we haven't even talked about the first half of the year we were saying Bevo was cooking him with the choices he was making. So the fact that they got past that just as a pass mark, and I think Bevo is, yeah, the early on in the season was costing them a few more wins. So I think they should be a lot better. They should be winning at least a final or two with this list, I think. So, yeah, they were, that's just a pass for me. Down not, the stretch, like they were just... They got beaten by Adelaide by 60 points. Yeah. The same time, but down though, the stretch, like, No, they found their they rhythm, yeah. They finally actually sort of got yeah, into yeah. a groove there. This no, but that's what I mean. They do those things. They beat you along the way. They beat yeah. Sydney away. They win those games. Then they go to Adelaide and get flogged. Yeah. It's the most Western that's Bulldogs thing ever. That's why the fan base second is, yeah. best offense and the best defense in the league, which is pretty crazy. That's great. It and doesn't like, mean anything. You're like, right, but where are those like early season wins when you're trying to get into yeah. a groove? Just be a dominating team. Just once. Yeah. Just yes. do it. They so. never, yeah, assert themselves. That, even when they won the flag the whole year, though. So how do they get better next year? They, <sighs> I don't know. Consistency. <laughs> no, they just, they just, they show, more, they show more consistency. They had some injuries at, key, at times as well. I think maybe even another inside mid would help them too. Bit of pressure yeah, off yeah. Libba, who's one concussion away from retirement. Yeah, so we better get rid of Jack McRae. Yeah, well, I'm, I think He's that, a slower uh, stats guy. Oh, I'm, I'm quick, mate. No, I'll, I'll race you. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, uh, right foot race, done. Yeah, a bit worried about them Around the Ballarat future. on a marathon course. McRae, Daniels, <laughs> and Smith. Shut up, Jim. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, yeah, McRae, Daniels, and Smith losing them, I think the depth is going to drop off next year. I think it's going to be fine. I think Sam Darcy's a weapon. All right, some very brief yeah, nahs. Does Clary move in the trade period? Yeah, nah. Nah. No, I don't think anyone can afford it. No, it's not the afford. I think it's, you don't want to deal with him. No, like, I, he's I a think head case. You don't want to give up anything to get a dude who's getting paid a crap ton so, of money. So whereas last year when Adelaide, like, oh, maybe two first round draft picks, no one's giving okay. Melbourne nah, two nah. first round draft picks. They should picks. have probably taken that. Uh, they should have taken two first round draft picks for Harrison Petty. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. They should have. No, nah, he's uh, not going Does anymore. Dan Houston move? Yeah, nah. Yeah. Yeah, to North. Destination club. Let's go. I'm interested <laughs> to see if they get the job done. It does feel like there is momentum. The rumors. Sort of happening, however, this though. is the most like yeah rumors north of had in a long time. Last one. Is there a shock move we don't see coming in the trade period? Yeah. No. Uh, so, always, always. Yeah. I'm. I'm trying to think of what it could. Remember be. when we got that gigantic uh, when it was the Hornet deal and it was like a five team trade, four team trade. Well, you see, it was ridiculous. Yeah, those pages that do the mega trade. I really want to. We haven't had a big trade with like three or four different clubs. That was two years ago when Hornet got traded. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. a while. That's a, that's a while. So you're saying put Adam Cooney in charge of trades? <laughs> no. For no, Absolutely definitely not. not. <laughs> but he is a One funny. One team a always funny. gets completely bent over in his trades. Well, you yeah. might remember last year we actually came up with the every team we in the did. NFL mega trade, which just blew everyone's mega trade out of the water. That was that so you know teams. What? It was great. We're doing that again. We're doing it again. We're going <laughs> to pop that off next week, start of next week. We're going to break it down to next week's show. I forgot about that. We'll do, because we're getting to the very end of this one. There will be a move that we don't see coming. There'll be like some player that just goes, actually, this place sucks. I'm out. I reckon Peace. it could be like a Essendon player, Saints player. Just like, is it like Jake middling. Stringer going to the Gold Coast? Oh. Is it actually Sam DeConan going somewhere? No, because there's there's chat about that at the moment. Yeah. So it's it, not a shock, is it? No. But still. Uh, Paddy Cripps moving somewhere. That's a shock, isn't in it? In exchange for Harley Reid. <laughs> yeah. Two-time Brownlow medalist. Who says no? I, I think, oh, he's gettable. He's gettable. There'll, All right. there'll be a big move. There will be one. I reckon there's going to be something just in the works. You just don't hear about it. Right, but that'll do us for the AFL Today Show for today and for this week. We'll be back next week. We're going to let free agency simmer for a couple of days. We'll be yep. back with a midweek show next week. Basically to catch you up with the trade stuff, and we'll probably do another one the following week as well. Well, maybe... Yeah, the following week to Which wrap up. Which is the end of trade. And then the end of the trade period. So we're going to go a little bit more chill the next couple of weeks. We'll still be popping off with reaction stuff on the social. So get around <laughs> all the social gear that we have for the old, what is it, Aussie Rules Today. Yes, on, on Facebook. Yeah. Bet AFL Today Show everywhere else. So TikTok, X, IG. All the good Spotify, stuff. Spotify, Apple Podcast. And of course, make sure you rate, review, and star all the shows that we also do as well as this one. What have we got? AFLW today. Yep. We've got the Creek Today podcast. We have the Football Today podcast. We have NBA Australia, which is back now, as well as NFL Australia. Yes. And for your GGs, hold all tickets. So Get we've still got them. footy, AFL today, AFLW today, all the way through till November 30th November. when the Beautiful. W Grand Final is. If you're listening slash watching this before Thursday, Darcy Vessio from Carlton yeah. on the show Thursday AFLW because legend. it is the thousand game that will be played for premiership points at Icon yes. Park on Thursday night. Might the old Optus Oval. You should, yeah. What else am I doing? Nothing. Let's go. There we go. See you there. Well, because we don't have a Thursday night show anymore for this show, yeah. so I can actually do stuff on Thursday. <laughs> How good's that? 
Don't tell the missus. I'll just go down the pub. <laughs> just say, we've got another show to do. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're still Not a team show. Yeah. <laughs> oi, oi, oi. All right. Get around. Let me get around a few <laughs> sneaky tins then. And we will catch you next week with more AFL Today show. Until then, look after yourselves. Remember, AFLW is still back, but we'll be back soon. Trade period. It's here.